Hey, what's up everyone? I have finally reached it. I've reached a thousand unique beer check-ins on the Untapped app. Um, I didn't even realize I was getting this close to a thousand, but I figured I would uh, make a, a video about this because I, um, I was at a brewery and I realized that Untapped must have some sort of API because every time I checked in a beer, I would see my name get displayed on um, like a TV. Um, and that's a perfect, perfect application of uh, an API and the untapped API. So I looked into it and sure enough, they have their own API. Um, you do need to request access to it. So I'm going to just show you how you can do that. And we're eventually going to just work with um, the API and get some GeoJSON back uh, and create a file, a GeoJSON file in Python. And then we'll just display it on a map like this. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. You can kind of see all the different breweries. Um, I've been at and, and you know what uh, my comment was about it. So good IPA, uh, the name of the beer, and there's a lot more properties uh, you can display. So if we go, I'm just going to Google Untapped API, and they actually have this explorer you can play with. So this is a good way to um, just see what kind of data you get. So if we go to, yeah, I think a user feed is what we want. This is just just to give you a, an idea of the sort of info you can get back. So here's all the beer data. So the name, the label, the style, ABV, brewery, brewery label, all this cool information um, gets returned. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, just keep watching and we're gonna um, just jump right into it. So in order to get started with this API, you need to basically register for the app or basically add an application. So you need to go through this process and it took maybe three weeks for, for mine to get accepted. Um, you do need to kind of, you know, give them a reason why you need access to the API. So, um, you know, I just said I was interested in learning about it and I wanted to make some YouTube videos and, and show other people how to use it. And um, they accepted that and they were able to give me the information or give me access. Um, so yeah, just fill this out and register and then kind of just wait. Um, but while you're waiting, we're, we're going to just dig into this and it's, it's a good exercise in how to, um, deal with, um, an API response and, you know, deal with, uh, GeoJSON data and all that. So why don't we just get started in PyCharm and I'm just going to create a new Python file. Oops, not HTML, new Python and let's just call it untapped API. And before I forget, let me make this bigger. So we'll go into presentation mode. All right, we're gonna need a few imports. So actually, let me get out of presentation mode. And we're gonna need to make sure we have a few things installed. So open up your terminal here. And however you install um, packages, I'm using pip here, because I'm using a virtual environment in Python, but just install, we're gonna need requests so just pip install requests and then pip install. We're gonna need GeoJSON. So pip install GeoJSON. And you can see I already have these installed, but just wanted to show you how you would have to do that too. Um, all right, so let's head back into presentation mode and let's go ahead and import requests. And then from GeoJSON, we're importing point feature feature collection and dump. So th this is not 100% necessary. It just makes it really simple to create a GeoJSON file. Uh, we could construct it ourselves manually with code, but it would be a little bit more annoying to do that. And you know, this is heavily supported and a lot of people use it. So why reinvent the wheel? We'll just use that. All right, so what we're gonna need now is our client ID, client ID and client secret. So this information actually gets supplied um, on that web page I was showing you a second ago. Once you get access to the API, you'll have information, the client ID and client secret. Uh, it's on this page. I'm not gonna click it because it contains uh, sensitive information, but just trust me, once you get access to the API, you'll have that information. And what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm actually going to get out of this presentation mode again. And I'm gonna make a new file 
and I'm going to store that credential information in that file. So I'm just going to make a file called config. And if you have config files, sometimes uh, one way to do it is to just use a Python file and make a dictionary. So I'm just going to make a dictionary called um, credentials. And I'm just going to show you how this works first. So this will be client ID and just give it uh, for now. This is going to say test and then we'll do client secret and we'll say client secret test and I just want to show you how you can import it here so we could just say client ID equals and then we can we need to import config here so let's just say import config and we need to make sure configs in the same directory here and it is so just now we can say config dot get and what are we going to get we're going to get credentials actually like that and let's say we want client ID to be client ID so since that's already um, in a dictionary like that we should be able to do just do that all right and this will be client secret and let's just run this and make sure it returns what what we expect um, so we'll print oops, client ID, print client secret. All right, so you see it says test client secret test. So I'm just going to, um, you know, I'm going to pause the video and put my actual credentials in here. And then you won't be able to see them on this screen. So that's why I'm doing this, just to kind of hide my ID information. But yeah, if you didn't know, that's a way you can use config files. Um, yeah, it's, it's useful to do that. All right, so now we actually have to figure out what response uh, or what request we need to make in Python. So let's go back to that untapped page here and look at the documentation. So let's look at the Explorer they had here. So this is gonna be the request that we need to make right here. So let's copy this and look at the documentation. And you can see here, they're also passing client ID equals client ID and client secret. So we just basically need to make whatever we're interested in calling here, grab that URL, and then you need to add a question mark to it like this, and then paste or pass this information, client ID and client secret. So let's go ahead and do that in code. So I'm just gonna make a variable called response and set it equal to requests.get and let's throw in that URL that we copied and make sure it's a string. And we're gonna to need to change this user to our username. So mine is franchise923. And remember I said we need to add a question mark. And I'm gonna make this an F string by putting an F in front of the quote here. And this is gonna allow me to put variables in here. So we need to say client underscore ID equals and now I'm going to put curly braces and that's where we're going to say we're going to put this variable in here client ID so client ID and then after that you need to make sure there's an and sign and and then we're going to say client secret equals and then curly braces client secret and then we want, want this to return in JSON so just tack on .json at the end. And let's just go ahead and try that. So if you print response, we should get something back. So let's just see what this looks like. Okay, so there you go. We, we're getting a ton of information back. Um, so that's good. That is how we, uh, you know, it's good that we're getting response back. Uh, but now let's sort of like work with this data a little bit more and get something back. The end goal is to return, uh, we want to spit out a GeoJSON file that we can use. So let's uh, work on doing that. All right, uh, it looks like I forgot to go back into presentation mode. I always do that. So let's go back into presentation mode. All right, let's get rid of this response now. Actually, we can, eh, let's get rid of it. Let's 
Actually, no, we need to print that response. We need to kind of look at this a little bit more. Is there a way to run it? Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so let's go all the way to the top and just look at what's being returned here. Actually, it might be easier to read from that untapped sample on here. So let's just kind of get an idea of what gets returned. So we're getting a JSON object and there's this meta dictionary. We're not really interested in that. So we don't need this. We don't need this. We are interested in this check-ins um, key here because this is where it, inside this check-ins there is information about um, the beer, the brewery. Um, yeah, so actually check-ins is a dictionary and then inside there's this items list. So we need to access this items list. This items list has 25 objects in it. And inside there, there's um, information about all the, the beer and stuff. So let's work on that. So let's try response. So we're gonna say check-ins. Check-ins equals response. Response. Let's go back to this page. So you see that check-ins is actually inside this response um, key. So that's why we have to do it like that. Response. And then it would be check-ins. And then I'm pretty sure check-ins. Then we want items. So let's do that. items. All right, so let's just print check-ins now. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so you see it's a list because we have that square bracket. So let's now let's let's loop through these items. So let's say for check-in in check-ins print check-in. See what that looks like. All right, so we still are getting a lot of data back. So we need to kind of narrow this down even more. So let's look, it's kind of hard to look at it this way. So that's why I keep going back to this page. So we have check-ins and then we're getting items and we're looping through these items one by one. So, and you can see everything in here is, uh, it's a dictionary. So we can call um, these pieces of information. So let's, let's grab check-in comment and see how that all works. So let's say, make a new variable called check-in comment equals, and we're gonna do check-in dot get, and we're going to get check-in comment. Did I spell that right? Check-in comment, I think so. So let's, now let's just print that out. Check-in comment and well let me get rid of this okay so now we're just getting back the check-in comment that I, I when I you know when I actually had the beer and I typed it in on my phone and checked it in this is the comment that I typed in so that's cool so we're getting that piece of information so let's go back to what we had on here so I was only displaying three things in this GeoJSON, the venue name, the beer name, and the check-in comment. Um, but we, we really can display any of this information. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get the beer name next. So you can see here, we're still in the items array. And inside this, there's a bunch of dictionaries. But you can see beer is its own dictionary. It's not just a key pair inside um, items. So we're going to have to reference the beer name a little bit differently. So let's work on getting that. So beer name equals check-in dot get. And we're gonna have to get beer. And then we're also gonna have to get 
beer name. So let's print beer name. And let's just print um, a, a empty line and see if that works. Okay, so now we get the beer name and the checking comment. So actually, let's check in comment. Let's just copy that and do the same thing for beer. Where's paste? There we go. Check in comment. This will be beer name. Okay. And I just want to make sure this was clear again. So we have items, which is a list or also known as an array. And inside that array, each item is a dictionary. So we have access to a key and a value key value key value and these you know keys their values are just strings or numbers um, but when we get down to some of these other um, keys like user for example this this key its value is actually a dictionary in itself same with the beer so that's why we had to reference it um, we had to like dig down a little bit further to, to access that data um, just wanted to clear that up so yeah, let's just go ahead and get venue. Actually, yeah, let's get venue name. And then we're also gonna need to get the latitude and longitude. That's part of the reason we're doing this is so we can put it on a map, right? So we have to get lat and long. Um, so yeah, venue. Uh, all right, so we're gonna access that. Very similar to how we got beer. So let's copy that. This is gonna be venue and then venue name. And then let's just print, copy this and print it. Venue name. Oops. Ven. Oh, I called it. I didn't rename it here. Venue. Let's see if that works. All right. So. Yeah, untapped at home. That's just um, if you check in a beer at home, that's what your venue actually is. So you can see here Stone Brewing, Crush and Brew. That's cool. All right, last thing we need to do is get the lat and long. So let's make a lat variable and long variable and set it equal to something similar to this. And let's just inspect that response again. So you see here location is its own um, key here in inside this um, inside the check-ins so yeah we just need to access location dot lat so let's try that equals location dot lat location can't remember if it's lawn or long. It's L-N-G, okay. L-N-G. Just copy this. So, lat, long, lat, long. All right, let's try this. Hmm, okay, we are missing something here. So it's probably, we're referencing it. I think location, okay. Location is actually within this brewery key. So there's brewery and then that's a dictionary in itself. Yeah, so you can see location is actually within the brewery. So we need to access it like brewery, then location. Makes sense. Check in, dot get. It's just gonna have to say brewery. Just like that. And let's just copy this. Paste, this will be L and G. Let's try that. All right, there we go. So now we have lat long, 
check in. So now we have all the information we want for each beer. So now the question is how do we get it in GeoJSON format? Um, so let me show you how we can do that. All right, so what we're gonna need to do is we need to make, right before we actually start looping through all this data, we need to make an array. So let's make something called features and just set it equal to an empty array. And then basically, I spelled that wrong, F-E-A-T, features. And then once we're done getting all this information, so either, you know, before or after these print statements, but it has to be after we actually get all the data. Let's put it at the end here. Let's say features.append. And what we need to do is we have to use some of those GeoJSON methods. So we need to use these guys up here. So we're gonna start by creating a new feature. So you can do that by saying feature, and then in parentheses, we need to add the geometry information. So the geometry equals, it's gonna equal a point. So again, these functions are all coming from this GeoJSON that we imported. So GeoJSON is basically just JSON, but it has um, you know well-known keywords um, like geometry. So we need to, we need to just pass it the information here. So we need to give it the long, longitude and then latitude. And then we need to get out of here. And now we need to give it properties. I think we need to be inside this parenthesis. Properties equal. And now this is gonna be just a dictionary. And now here's where we actually name whatever we want. So let's say uh, we want the beer name. So beer name. And th now what value is beer name going to be? It's going to be the beer name variable. So beer name. And now we do this the same thing if we, you know, for as many as we wanted to add. So beer name. And what's the other one that we have? Venue name. So venue name. And what's that going to equal? That's going to equal venue name. All right. Why does that look weird? Because this needs to go here. All right. And wasn't there one more? Oh yeah. Check in comment. All right. So check in comment, check in comment. All right. Let's clean this up a little bit. And let's just look at this one more time. So what it's doing is every time we loop through, it's adding this new object basically to uh, this features array. So this features array is gonna be a list of objects. There's gonna be 25 of them because we're looping through 25 times. And it's, it's just kind of formatting it in a, a, a GeoJSON uh, fashion. So let me just show you some GeoJSON. Uh, just a sample of it. So you see, this is valid GeoJSON, and you can see it looks just like JSON. Um, this is really the bulk of it. So when we're using that Python GeoJSON package, it's basically formatting it like this. So it knows the type because we used feature here. We said feature, so that means it's gonna be a type feature. And then geometry, um, we passed it a point just like that. So if you remember, we gave it a type point and we gave it lat long. So that's gonna go in this coordinates. So basically the package is doing all this for us. Like we don't have to type coordinates and make it look just like this. That's what this package is doing for us. Uh, and then you can see properties and you know, properties is an ob a dictionary just like that. So that's why they're doing it like that. All right, so now once we're done and satisfied with that, all we need to do is outside of this for loop, just go back down and we're going to make something called feature collection and set it equal to feature collection and then just pass it that features list. And now, now we're good. Now we just need to write the JSON file. So just say with open, now just give it a path. So what I usually do is let me get out of presentation mode. Oops, oh no. Appearance, exit that. And we want to exit presentation mode. 
I'm just going to copy the path here, the absolute path of this file, and paste it here, and just rename this to um, untapped api.geojson. Okay. And then pass it the write option with a W. And then as file, actually let's say as geojson. Actually, we better not, because that's a keyword. All right. We're going to use this dump method. So dump, and then dump feature collection and geojson file. So let me, just like that. What are we miss? Oh, we have another. We don't need that there. Okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, we don't... We're doing a lot of stuff in just 34 lines of code. That's the beauty of Python here, but it can be a little bit abstracted away. But let's uh, let's just run this and see if we get, keep your eyes looking here. We should get a new file there. No, we got some type of error. So let me look at what we did wrong here. Something's wrong with the float object is not iterable. Yeah, it crashed right away. So coordinates something's wrong with the coordinates long lat maybe that needs to be oh silly mistake this actually needs to be in a tuple I think like that let me try that okay <laughs> that was uh, it was that was easy now you can see we have this new file here, and if we open it, it looks like valid GeoJSON to me. So let's go ahead and just control A to select it all, then control C. And let's go back to the browser here. And I've been using this GeoJSON website, so just type in like GeoJSON map. And yeah, this GeoJSON.io, this just lets you um, paste in valid GeoJSON and it'll just display it on the map. And I think it's pretty cool. So there you go, we pasted it in and we're getting all these check-ins. Um, oh yeah, so we're only getting, I think by default, maybe 25 responses here. There is a way to add more um, check-in information or basically to request more um, data. So let's go, let me show you how to do that. So at the end here, after the client secret, we want to pass another piece of uh, data, and this is called limit. So limit set it equal to 50. That's a good number. I think before it was returning, yeah, what, remember it was 25. So let's just run that. All right, and let's look at what got added here. So there should be more, so let's control A, control C, go back to Chrome. And I like to just reload this page and hit cancel. Okay, there you go. So now you have more of the check-ins. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much the basics. There is one other thing I wanted to cover. If we go to the documentation here. So it's saying something about this user agent. So it says, please note that you must provide a non-standard user agent for all requests using the API. So what that means is we basically need to pass um, a header to um, the request. We just need to attach a header to it. So let, let me just show you how to do that really quick. Um, it's saying you just need to identify yourself. So let me show you what the heck that looks like. So just right before you do your response, make something called headers equal, and this is gonna be a dictionary. And we need something called user agent. And this is just going to be a name. So franchise 923 beer viewer. And then we need to say from. And then just say who it's from. So franchise 923 at gmail.com. And to, to add headers to a request, you just pass it. Uh, so 
in here we're getting this URL and then we're also, if you give it a, a comma, you can say headers equal and then just say headers. All right, so this is effectively, not, it's not gonna change anything with our code right now. We're still gonna get the same response, same JSON is gonna be uh, produced, but this is just technically what they're saying you need to do. Um, so if you wanna you know, abide by the rules, that, that, that's how you would do that there. All right, I think that's all I, I really wanted to show. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you could do with this API. This is just really simple, how to spit out GeoJSON, but you know, you could um, put it on some sort of map like this. So I have, um, this website's using the Strava API and it's in real time making requests to the API and displaying it on this map here. You could do the same thing with the uh, untapped API. Uh, I just didn't want to basically remake this tutorial because it's 95% the same as what I uh, showed earlier. Um, and yeah, I think there there's a limit of like 100 requests you can make to this API per hour, um, just FYI. Uh, I was, when I was first testing with this, I, uh, I was hitting that limit. Um, but yeah, yeah, here it is, 100 calls per hour. All right, um, hope that was helpful. I just wanted to make some sort of video because I hit a thousand check-ins. I, th I thought this would be appropriate. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And if you uh, if you liked it, just give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. All right, thanks for watching.